Good afternoon, everybody. This is Preeti Krishna, a program manager with Microsoft. And I'm Abram Jackson, another program manager, and we both work on Microsoft Graph. So thank you all for coming out to our session today. First, I wanted to just learn a little bit about you guys. Uh, who's, who considers themselves uh, Microsoft Graph, uh, developer, decision maker around Microsoft Graph? Okay, four people, okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, Microsoft Azure? Okay. Oh, okay. 20, okay. So uh, more Microsoft Azure folks, Microsoft Graph folks. You know, we have this session, right, in this title, right, we have both Microsoft Graph and Microsoft Azure, right? Both of these things together. Uh, so maybe four of you knew about Microsoft Graph or have been going to the Graph sessions, uh, so we'll take that into consideration. Uh, about half of you uh, were doing Microsoft Azure, uh, which leaves about uh, 20 people here in this room um, not working on either of those things. Um, you guys, you, you paid $3,000 to come here, right? You're working on something? <laughs> anyway, whether you, you consider yourself a Microsoft Graph developer or Azure developer or both, or neither. Uh, we hope that by the end of this session, you're using them together to build a new class of Insight applications. Talking of Insight applications, we are entering a new era of Insight-driven decision-making applications. And what we mean by this is Insights to drive your business operations and your decisions. So if you're a business decision maker, uh, Actually, just raise your hand. Are you a business decision maker? Do we have any PDMs? Okay. Seven. Okay, good. If you're a business decision maker, right, uh, you have lots of choices to make every day, big and small. We hope that insights and analytics, and we know that insights are going to help you take your business operations to the next level. You can be data-driven uh, as opposed to uh, your feelings or the political climate. Uh, you can be data-driven for any of those decisions that you're making, large or small. Not only that, you can make effective and efficient investigations and analysis using insights too. So that actually backs up more about your decisions that you have taken based on your uh, based on insights too. So just to continue the cycle there. Um, any data scientists? Any people that work with data scientists? All right, yeah, that, that's where I'm at too, right? I'm a big data systems uh, sort of person, and I work with data scientists. But I know what the data scientists need, right? Uh, Data scientists spend a huge amount of their time wrangling data, right? We even have data wrangler as a persona uh, in, uh, certain, in some organizations, or sometimes data engineer. And they're spending a lot of their time just getting all of their data together uh, before they can actually figure out what deep neural net they actually need uh, to achieve this business objective. So uh, through insights and through what we're talking about, Data wranglers, data scientists are going to be able to spend less time wrangling data, getting it all together, and more time solving what they're actually trying to do in their business. So uh, for the four of you who've been going to the Microsoft Graph sessions, you've already heard of Contoso Airlines. You've already heard this, that uh, we're using Contoso Airlines as a fictional company, right? So we have somebody that we can talk about and we can design scenarios for. but. Uh, you should imagine that uh, this is your own company, your own enterprise. But for the purposes of this example, Contoso Airlines is a regional carrier where they have security teams, they have a data team, they have maybe 4,500 people in their flight crew, uh, and they're using the cloud, and they're using Microsoft 365. So Contoso Airlines is a company, but, and they have their insight needs as well. So the insight needs are basically how can they determine their security investments for the next fiscal or for the future? How do they want their roadmap to be driven by insights? Um, what kind of security investigations and automations do they want to design so that they can have that backed by insights as well? How can they get very effectively and efficiently to the bottom of the issues and security issues in particular as well? And how can they further optimize their flight crew assignments as well for productivity benefits? So these are kind of real examples that Contoso Airlines is facing, but this can ex be extrapolated to other enterprise scenarios as well. So how many of you are working in enterprises or enterprise developer? Can you relate to this? Uh, 
like kind of um, insight requirements. Or even if you're not an enterprise developer, if you're an ISV or like independent software vendor or an MSP, managed service provider, you still have s similar challenges where you want to design something that would enable you to um, be uh, data-driven and insight-driven for decision-making or even like uh, investigations or productivity driving as well. So what's stopping Contoso Airlines from achieving all of these objectives, right? Uh, and what's stopping you guys, right, from uh, improving your business processes? Like, this is hard stuff, right? And this is where we want to help, uh, so help provide tools to address some of these business challenges. So a major thing that I represented earlier, right, for the Data Wrangler, the, they have a business objective, right? They're trying to analyze their flight crew assignments to flights for Contoso Airlines. But their data is in so many different places. Uh, it's maybe in their ERP system, and it's in their scheduling system, and it's in their flight system, and they have the FAA integrated systems. All of this data from all of these different places, all of it needs to get joined together, and they spend too much of their time doing that. And <clears throat> even for a medium-sized business like Contoso Airlines, they have so much data, right? This is not the kind of data that they can just work with, you know, in PowerShell, like I like to use <laughs> as a former IT guy, uh, on their laptop, right? That, that's not going to happen. Uh, they need specialized tools to handle this terabytes into petabytes of data. And when you're trying to analyze this data for your organization, there's uh, real privacy concerns, right? If you are getting uh, the email content, right, uh, of your CEO. Like, uh, that's a real problem. You can't just hand that out to a data analyst or to a data scientist. You have to be pretty careful with this kind of thing. Uh, and so it's a, a real privacy problem, and not even just the executive example, but just individual users. Uh, we see, uh, you know, that privacy is a fundamental human right uh, that we believe here at Microsoft. Uh, and it's a really difficult thing that stops a lot of folks from doing insights. And similarly, once uh, you have that data and you've got it all together, securing access to it uh, is, becomes a major business objective, uh, and you spend a lot of time just securing it. So that's fair. What do we, yeah, I think uh, the, four of, um, the four people who attended graph sessions would be familiar with this slide. Uh, this is basically where Microsoft 365 platform powered by graph, Microsoft Graph um, comes to the rescue and helps out the challenges. In particular, we are going to look at a couple of areas out here. One is going to be the Microsoft Graph Data Connect, so which enables you to establish and get your data from M365 using Graph and connect it with Azure. The second one is going to be your Microsoft Graph Security API, which is a REST API, another REST API in Microsoft Graph, which enables you to connect different security products via a single user interface. So getting on to what uh, we'll be like delving deeper into each one of these, and then we'll be looking at some demos as well to see what are the possibilities, slice of the possibilities actually for analytics. So um, let's look at um, what Microsoft Security API does. Microsoft Se Graph Security API provides a unified interface that uh, you can connect to using just a single endpoint and single authentication, which is graph authentication. And you can get your data from different disparate security products in a unified schema. With the unified schema, what you can do is then furthermore pivot into different properties of the schema and start b digging into more data and correlate your data across these different uh, data sets. Now, when we are talking about different security products, I'll cite some examples here. We are talking about, say, Azure Security Center, or we are talking about Windows Defender ADP, or Office 365, or Palo Alto Networks, for that matter. Like we also have, we're working with both first party when, like, as well as like third party security products as well for this. And um, you get all these alerts in a common schema for correlation. And furthermore, what you can do with that is add additional context from graph. So if you have a user associated with an alert, you can start tapping into the user profile in the graph and get further information about the user and build enriched solutions. This paves way for automations. So once you know more about the user, then you can start even closing out your alerts in an automated manner. Because now you know more about what the user background is and to make those decisions uh, in a rule-based manner or in an automated manner. So 
we're talking of alerts, what are really, like alerts are basically security alerts that come in when um, you have uh, activity which is away from the normal behavior. So that's when you have all the different, there are so many different security products protecting a perimeter or even like deployed in organizations for identity protection or for information protection or threat detection, threat prevention and so on and so forth. So all of these API products have their own API sets and they're very, very different, right? And that's where like when you have these alerts coming in through Graph, Graph has a, a Graph Security API has an alert entity. So you get all of these in a common view. And you have the user information, you have host information, you have file, pro file and uh, process information and so on and so forth that you can query and pivot on to find more about, uh, more about the alerts originating from other security products to inform your decisions and, and investigations. What more, you can actually go ahead and update your alerts to assign it to an analyst for investigation. Or even you can go ahead and update the status to close out an alert. Or you can tag an alert with say a high value asset tag if it's one, uh, if it qualifies for that. So that you can then build a query and process it differently. So all these are possibilities there. Alerts also support graph webhooks. So if there is a high severity alert that is originating, then you can be notified of it instead of your application polling for it and uh, getting that data. So that's yet another valuable feature that, uh, that pretty much uh, has good uptake on our developer side as well. So this, uh, the alerts are in V1, and uh, we're happy to inform that Secure Score is also in V1 um, as of now. So we have these two entities in V1 at this point for Graph Secure API. So secure score is, um, it gives you information about your security posture of your organization. When we talk about secure score, it's basically just a score, like your credit score. And uh, it, it's, it's a number. And the number changes if you have different solutions deployed. Like if you have Azure deployed, and you have Office deployed, and your Windows deployed, your security score number will be high, because you have that many configurations that you, you have to keep in a secure state. So it gives you an indication of where, how your security configurations, data, and all is managed. And uh, it gives you remediations as well so that you can improve those over time and improve your score over time and build a trend around that. So it enables you to make those uh, insight-based decisions too. Now, um, let's go back to our personas, like the people whom we saw who are trying to make decisions, who are trying to investigate or get to the bottom of the issue, or people who, the data scientists who are trying to improve uh, overall efficiencies. So from a security standpoint, the decision maker is a, a CISO or a chief um, security officer or a chief information security officer who would like to see how to budget for the future, for the next fiscal year, in terms of the regular execution activities as well as forward-facing security investments. Now how can she make an, a very informed insight-driven decision on this? We'll see a demo on that. Similarly, we'll see uh, another demo on how um, security analysts can go ahead and get to the bottom of security investigations and have a clear path to investigate further very quickly with a few clicks. So that's yet another solution we'll look at. And furthermore, we'll look at the data scientist scenario in terms of the data scientist is always um, kind of looking for opportunities to improve, build the right models so that uh, security overall in general is improved. How can you train your security products to be more intelligent? And that's the problem that we'll be looking at uh, in the third demo that we'll be going through. So without much ado, let's... Out here for the for the scenario of the security investigation, we'll start with that, and then we'll go to the decision making part. So this is a security analyst who is trying to see what, uh, how can she inform her investigation path. And now this is a Power BI dashboard that uh, uses the Microsoft Graph Security API connector. Um, so out here I have um, information from all the alerts coming in from different security products, like Azure Security Center. 
Illumio, uh, there is Azure Act AD Identity Protection, there's Palo Alto Networks, Windows Defender ADP, and so on and so forth. It's, all these alerts are coming in from different security products in the same view. And all of these are categorized. So this is all coming from the API itself, the so entity for, alerts. For these different itself. security products, do you have to do work to integrate to each one of those? They're all like connected with the graph security API. Cool. So that's, that's the value there instead of you connecting individually to each one of them. So yep, you have uh, your unfamiliar location category, block traffic, and so on and so forth, and there are alerts by users and alerts by hosts. These are all simple slices of the same data that's all available through the alerts entity. So now let's drill into the unfamiliar location just to see there are nine of them now, right? Let's take a look. Okay, Douglas has contributed a couple, and there's Christy who's associated with one of them. So Douglas is also trending more in terms of overall alerts. Let's take a look at what Douglas is up to. And uh, yeah, if you look at this, um, he has a couple of unfamiliar locations. There is a suspicious activity. This abnormal data access, which is, um, which is a bit concerning because uh, you usually want to protect your data. And there is a suspicious PowerShell. Now, the suspicious PowerShell is very interesting because that could be the reason that you're seeing the other alerts too. So now you have a clear path from a, sec from a but just like standing in the shoes of a security analyst, I have a clear path to go ahead and drill into what's my next step for investigation with just three clicks. Is this how security analysts spend a lot of their time, like uh, looking at alerts and investigating things? Yeah, so currently they have to go through different, uh, different applications. If usually like enterprises run a bunch of different security products. So for example, if they're running Azure Active Directory Identity Protection and they're running Windows Defender ADP and Azure Security Center, an analyst has to go and investigate in each of these portals or connect to each of these to get that data and then correlate them because the schemas are also different across these products. With Graph Security API, you just get it in, in a unified format. Now, the analyst manager also has an interest in this, right, because the analyst manager can now look at a complete view of what the alert investigation status is. How many of the alerts are unassigned, which is alarming, right? Like over 50% of alerts which are unassigned. That's, and out of that, if you see, there are so many high alerts which are unassigned. Clear indication for something to do like out here from management aspect. So it gives a security management perspective and picture on that. Alerts by severity is yet another thing. Like I, I would really like to, I'm interested in looking at my high severity alerts and where is it coming from? And most of these don't have users associated, but they're coming in from Azure Security Center. And uh, so that's something that I want to keep, and keep a track on as well. So basically, um, it gives me all the slice and, die, uh, like slice and dice of information that I can pivot on and take a look at. Furthermore, I can also look at trend from a manager, analyst manager perspective. I have a trend of different security categories over time. So now I know like, okay, this month was, um, this particular week in November was very bad. So why, why was that so? What can I do about it? What was, what, is there anything else that I can correlate that to? Was there a change in the organization that contributed to this? These are all questions that you can start answering and asking and answering. Furthermore, alerts by security products trend. The possibilities are kind of limitless here because this is the schema that we are looking at. And each one of these is queryable and pivotable. So just imagine the permutations out here. So yeah, that's what, um, that's what this brings in. Now this is all, I just mentioned that uh, this is all possible using the Microsoft Draft Security Power BI connector. How do we get access to it, right? So there is um, home, get data, get to more, and online services and we get to Microsoft Graph Security. So the Graph Security API has G8, but then the connector is in beta because that's a part of the connector lifecycle. You start in beta and then you get to V1. So the connector is in beta, you go and connect, and it gives you an option to select your API version. So just for humor's sake, let's select beta. So you see alerts, you see secure score, all the entities that's in V1 is also represented in beta. So that's how the graph um, overall versioning works as well. So yeah, I can go ahead and select alerts. I get a, a preview of the data and you can load this and get that pivot out here, view out here. 
So this connector uh, is available in February release of Power BI. And uh, so you can get that. And the steps are all documented on RAP uh, documentation as well. And uh, as well as it's available in the GitHub repo too that I'll be sharing shortly. That's graph.microsoft.com? Yes, graph. All right, cool. Yeah. Okay, now moving on to our um, security decision maker or the CISO who wants to see how to make um, a kind of a data-driven decision around all, um, around the fixed limited budget that she usually has every year. So now, Secure Score is uh, yet another entity that you can use within the Microsoft Draft Security API connector to build this pivot. Out here, she can see that her current security score is 431 out of a total that she can hit, which is 657 for the organization. Now, how can she improve this in the next, um, next few months very quickly? So there are solutions and remediations for that as well. Enabling MFA will get her to increase 50 points and it has a low implementation cost and low user impact. Now, if I were a CISO, I'll just go ahead and plan that for my um, upcoming quarter. The next one is, this is interesting, there is a mobile device management um, remediation which has a moderate impact on the users and it has a moderate implementation cost as well, but just increases the points by 20. Probably I'll plan this for later when I have a better like, sense of, like, if I have more money or something like that. So it enables me to do that. Now besides the secure score information that I pulled into this dashboard, there is a trend chart out here because uh, secure score information is stored only for the past 90 days. So to, if I want to build a trend of uh, so my security score over many multiple months, I've been storing this in my other database. And that's where this is uh, getting pulled from, in the secure score trend database. So I'm pulling that from there, and then I have the January, February, March um, trends as well. So now I can see how it's been, like, continuously trending up on my security score as well. So not only this, as uh, developers, what are the opportunities here, right? So mixing and mashing of data is possible out here. So you can use a graph security API data connector uh, for Power BI, and you can mash that up with safe financial data from some other database to build your investment portfolio in terms of how do we want to like invest based on the secure score or based on the alert execution and investments that's happening and also like your financial data. So that's an opportunity. You can build all these cool dashboards and um, enable those uh, solutions and enable uh, enterprises for that. The other option out here is you can build connectors. Like we have the Power BI connector for Microsoft Draft Security API. You can build similar connectors for other, other analytical solutions. For example, some of our ISVs like Swimlane and Demisto have integrated with the Microsoft Draft Security API, and they have been able to integrate it in their security orchestration and response solutions to automatically get all the alerts and then take an automated response. So there are possibilities for different, uh, uh, like different segments of audience out here, developers out here as well. Now getting on to the third um, scenario that we were looking at, the data scientist. So the data scientist has to deal with a lot of data and uh, this is a representational set of data that we're looking at for uh, Contoso and uh, basically has to drive, derive the right set of insights that he can use to train uh, security solutions and make them more intelligent. Now, for this purpose, what we're doing is we are taking the example of uh, Jupyter Notebooks and it's hosted on Azure Notebooks. We'll talk about what it is all about. So Jupyter Notebooks is, um, first I'll just go ahead and clear the output so that it makes it all clear and it, you can actually view the code and execution. So Jupyter Notebooks is a document that allows you to have uh, your narration as well as live code, as well as commands or visualizations all in the same document and in, it can be executed in the same document. So, and um, it supports multiple languages. Python is pretty common use uh, language out here, out here in this. You can host Jupyter Notebooks on, um, offline on your um, server or you can host it online somewhere else, or you, Azure provides a good service, like notebooks.azure.com. It's very easy, and you can go ahead and post your new Jupyter Notebooks there, and it gets hosted there very easily, too. 
So this uh, particular service, this particular notebook runs on Azure Notebooks. And and Azure Notebooks is free right now. Yes, right? it free, is. Free compute, uh, free notebooks, yes, uh, just in is. the cloud. Yep, in the cloud. So it's very easy to just use it. The way to execute this is the shortcut is basically shift and enter. So I'm just going to execute this notebook now. In this case, what is happening is we have, um, so this is just what is Jupyter Notebook. So I have a command out here, which is basically printing a command. So I'm executing it. Okay. Let me see how to restart this. This notebook that you're, that you're showing now, is this uh, available for the attendees? Yes, it is, and it is available on GitHub. And you can get there from graph.microsoft.com again? Um, yes, the GitHub is shared there, and I'll also have a link, a direct link to this. And let's see. Okay, I think I'll just go ahead and Restart this. So all these notebooks are shared out on GitHub. Okay, that is not, uh, that's something I haven't seen some while, I don't know why that is coming up. What she's gonna be doing with this notebook, yeah. right? It's a, it's a great collaboration tool, <coughs> right? Where you can actually view subsets of that data, you can quick chart some of that data, you can execute things in line, have those comments all together. Uh, it's a really uh, incredible tool. Uh, and here on the GitHub, uh, that's linked from graph.microsoft.com. You can get this notebook. Uh, <laughs> okay, let's. And, and work through these samples yourself. Let's start this. And like I said before, right, it's it's free right now. Azure Notebooks is totally free. Uh, free compute. Uh, you should always take advantage of free compute. The really nice thing about these Jupyter Notebooks is you can load them locally uh, or in the cloud on Azure Notebooks. And this the okay, sample that so uh, if she's able to load it. Uh, we'll have the libraries that make it really simple for you to be able to call the security APIs through Jupyter Notebooks by Python. Uh, we'll let, uh, okay, so um, let me see if I have just a direct one that I can show you on our GitHub. So this is the link to the GitHub site where all the notebooks and a uh, lot of other samples are hosted too. So basically, this is the notebook. Um, let's let's take a look at this, and uh, we'll try to get it working by the time the, towards the end. So um, yeah, our notebook is basically it's Jupyter is it allows you to munch together different different data sources into the same document and allow you to execute and build visualizations using different data sources. And um, in this case, we, what we're doing out here is we have modules or libraries for authentication. And uh, authentication can be done in a couple of ways out here. One is you can directly enter your username and details, or you can go ahead and just enter it in um, environment variables in Azure Notebooks. And uh, for this particular demo that uh, I was about to show, uh, it would actually go ahead and do that in Azure um, environment variables. So then I can go ahead and execute that, and once that is done, it loads. And basically, these libraries are all about how can I get all the OData queries from a graph, uh, graph standpoint? Um, the graph folks are aware that you have OData queries for graph. So from, for the benefit of everyone, graph supports OData querying um, on different entities, and you can get the data across uh, different, uh, different entities like users or security alerts and so on and so forth. So these are the OData queries and then the properties that are exposed via functions in this notebook. So these uh, functions can be uh, libraries as well that you can use across different and share and use across different notebooks too. And basically what we're doing here is uh, we can run and get the top five alerts. 
or you can even like query alerts with um, a user principal name and get pivot those alerts based on user principal name and get those lists and inform your investigations. And similarly, you can also query by FQDN or alert ID and uh, all those pivots too. So let's give it one more shot and see if it opens up. I think it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. The only thing that's missing in this demo is actually executing those commands, of course. They do work. Notebooks do work. Um, yeah, and the, the, uh, read those. Uh, give this another try. Cross your fingers. Oh, oh, okay. So, uh, an extension that she did to this demo uh, was uh, to find uh, one of the users uh, who's been logging in for Contoso Airlines yeah. from suspicious locations. Uh, was uh, so the part yeah, that we didn't that get to in the demo. All user who was yeah. logged in from um, an unfamiliar location. And basically, uh, the alert also gives you details on which locations he had logged in from. And there were three locations that he was logged in from, from ADAC and Fairbanks and uh, Cordobo, Cordobo. So these were the three um, locations, and then we were planning to do the investigations further using those data, that data. So yeah, these are uh, basically with the notebooks, you can go ahead and create more notebooks. And what you can do is you can also put it into Azure Databricks. And, uh, build models of, with those and also train your security solutions using that. So for example, if you have some patterns associated with users, like say Paul has unfamiliar location, so you can find more information about Paul from other data channels, like Paul's profile information. Suppose if Paul is a pilot, then that unfamiliar location login is legit. It's not um, really mostly an alert at that point. So if we can put those things together and fire rules and build intelligence into the system so that it accordingly treats those kind of alerts differently, then those are kind of uh, example possibilities that you can run with this from a data scientist point of view. So then switching back to our... So how does Graph Security API work? So that's, um, that's basically this, what it's all about. Federation. So any request that gets sent out from any of the applications that's integrated with Microsoft Graph Security API will get federated out to all the different providers that, um, that's available in the ecosystem that supply data to the Graph Security API. And the data is aggregated by Graph Security API and sent back to the, to the application that's making the request. Now, the, from a provider standpoint, we have all the Microsoft products like Azure Security Center, Windows Defender, ADP, Office, uh, 365, Advanced Threat Protection, Azure Advanced Threat Protection, Azure Sentinel, and so on and so forth, everyone getting covered. And from an external Microsoft perspective, we, work, we have Palo Alto Networks already supplying alerts to the Graph Security API. So if a customer, if a customer is running Palo Alto Networks and Windows Defender ADP, for example, then they'll be getting alerts together from an integrated app um, in their integration, integrated scenario app. So, and, um, and then we're working with others as well to get that on board too. Contrast is also live at this point. So then we have, we spoke about alerts and secure score, and there are new entities that we just uh, also shipped, which is in beta, indicators and actions. So now you no longer, uh, you, can, uh, you can also go ahead and take actions on your alerts too, like blocking an IP through Windows Defender ADP, or so on and so forth. So these are new entities, and we're working on more um, features that's coming up too. So be besides that, these are example scenarios of applications who have integrated with the Graph Security API. So you can see we have a list of um, different ISVs, like we have Demisto, we have Swimlane, um, Anomaly, and our, our integration partners. And we also have MSSPs like InSpark and all who have integrated and run the services uh, using the Graph Security API. And uh, SIM solutions are also there, like SIMs are basically security incident and event management tools. So Splunk and QRadar and all, you can integrate with that to get your alerts streamed through the Graph Security API to leverage the unified alert format as well. And we'd like to see your app there pretty soon in the list. 
So Contoso Airlines has really made huge strides in their security, right? They're doing these analytics. They've improved the lives of their, uh, their chief security officer, their analysts, their engineers, uh, all in the security space, right? They, they've really got a good handle now, right, on the, uh, the, the security issues in their organization and how they're going to invest further. So that's the security space, and I hope all of you guys who are working for enterprises are going to go implement that at your enterprises right away, uh, just like Contoso Airlines has. Uh, but what about every other part of your business, right? The security is, is absolutely paramount, uh, but imagine doing that same thing that we've done for the chief security officer, for the chief, chief operations officer, or the head of product development. Uh, or the head of research, uh, or the head of finance, or marketing, or sales. And similarly, the analysts, not just the security analysts, but your business process analysts, and your operations analysts, and your uh, data analysts, and productivity analysts, and sales analysts, uh, and your data scientists, right, who are also working in all of these spaces. Security problems are <clears throat> a, a very critical part of what you're doing, but your business has other things that, they, that it also needs to do. So I'm very happy to announce uh, that uh, Microsoft Graph Data Connect <laughs> uh, is now generally available uh, to provide new extensibility through workplace analytics. Contoso Airlines is going to achieve those goals that you saw, improving the aspects of all different parts of their business, from their, from their decision makers, through their analysts, through their engineers, all the way down to their information workers for all of their employees. And so you, beginning now, you can start using Microsoft Graph Data Connect in your production experience uh, through extensibility of workplace analytics. So Microsoft Graph Data Connect. Uh, we've talked about it a little bit. Maybe you heard me last year talking about it at Ignite when it was in public preview, so I don't want to spend a lot of time uh, on the value, but it is a mechanism to do the same thing that you saw with security uh, for any other part of your Microsoft 365 data. So accessing millions of rows uh, into terabytes, hundreds of terabytes, perhaps petabytes for large enterprises, Handling privacy and minimization and getting only the data that you exactly need with the right terms of service under the right controls for governance and security for how that application is hosted. That's Microsoft Graph Data Connect. Let's talk about uh, how Contoso Airlines is going to use Microsoft Graph Data Connect for different aspects of their product. Uh, and I've got a lot of demos here uh, that will, uh, will, I'll do my best to uh, get through them. Uh, being coherent, uh, we'll probably uh, move quickly through some of this. So I also wanted to start in Power BI, right? Uh, this is Power BI for Contoso Airlines, right? The, their problem is analyzing their patterns of flight crew assignments, right, for their upcoming flights. So going to, uh, well, so my colleague Preeti, right, told me that uh, she had some unfamiliar location alerts uh, for the user Paul sides, right, for last week. So I'm going to drag this timeline slicer down to the last week. And I'm going to pick over here in this table the Paul sides user. And I know this is all too little to see. I just clicked on Paul sides uh, as the crew member. Here in this table is uh, the flights uh, that Paul is on. Contoso Airlines tracks their flights by sending out meeting requests uh, to their flight members. So all of this information is filterable here. We see that Paul was in Fairbanks. Uh, he was in ADAC, right? So these unfamiliar location, they make a whole lot of sense. Paul is a pilot. Uh, he's been flying to these locations. Uh, we can close out this alert. But I'm only able to do that because I'm already analyzing uh, flights for my organization. So if we take another scenario of looking at next week, I just heard that uh, my colleague Ron uh, has broken his leg. Uh, he's not going to be able to be a, a flight attendant uh, for these upcoming flights. Right? So we're filtering down to the next week. Uh, down in this bottom right corner, you can see the users uh, that he's already working with. Uh, also up here in this uh, flight screen, we know that these people are already on these flights, right? They can't be used for his substitute. 
So you can imagine doing analytics, looking at all of my organization's events and emails and meetings, looking at just the metadata to find really interesting relationships and solving my real business problems uh, for this. I also wanted to talk about decision makers. If you haven't seen Azure Marketplace already, it's, a, it's really wonderful, uh, and it's getting better and better, and we're leveraging it uh, for Microsoft Graph Data Connect applications uh, to provide a lot of value to business decision makers. So uh, listed here in the Marketplace, right, it's an app store, right, and these are applications that I can install to my business. I want to do uh, just uh, select one of these. Uh, we'll take a look at uh, TyGraph. TyGraph is, a, is an application that you can buy now uh, that uses Microsoft Graph Data Connect, and it finds all of the personal contacts of the entire organization, collects all of them together, deduplicates de them, and finds the actual correct information for all of the contacts, for all of the users, across tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of users. The really nice thing about uh, installing an application like this that uses Microsoft Graph Data Connect it installs to my Contoso Airlines Azure subscription. That means I, I, have, I can see which applications are installed. I can delete them. Uh, that gets rid of all of the data, right? Uh, can you imagine uh, just a, the delete button next to the rest of your data uh, as opposed to having the data in your multi-tenant SaaS uh, provider? This makes it a whole lot easier for me to buy. So does it also connect to um Tie Graph's data as well, or is it going to be just Azure and M365 data? So Tie Graph just you analyzes the office data, but it gets really interesting when you look at a provider like Harmony and their upcoming Topics application. The Harmony Topics application also analyzes the communications of the users, such so that uh, they can um, categorize and understand the emails, the documents of these users, what they're working on but it joins with an enterprise database that has your projects, maybe your ERP or uh, however else you represent your projects in your company. That, what that allows the information workers to do is instead of working in Outlook and you know, searching there and then moving over to Teams and searching there, they can just find you know, my upcoming proposal, like Tradewinds, North, North Tradewinds, is that our other fictional company? Contoso Airlines proposal, right? Uh, and work, here's all of my documents, here's all my meetings, here's all my emails, here are the spreadsheets that reference this, work with all of that all together without going into specific products. The nice thing about these and using Microsoft Graph Data Connect, they're only getting the very minimum amount of data that's required, and we'll show how that works in Data Factory. Meanwhile, you can see the privacy policy, the terms of service that are available, the legal language, it installs to my tenant, they can also specify Azure policy enforcement so that the data stays encrypted, and I can see that when my data officer receives this consent notification. And instead of taking proactive action, just me as a business decision maker, just saying, yeah, I'll buy that. Also really exciting in Azure Marketplace now, for you guys who are software vendors, you can have the Azure consumption bill from Contoso Airlines routed to your own organization. This allows you to monetize yourself uh, for the value that you're creating and not uh, charging for the consumption separately, uh, which allows you to uh, have the real bill. And customers like it because now they can buy per user per month the same way that they're buying Office or Dynamics or a lot of their other products, or maybe your existing products already. OK. <clears throat> um, so we we're, looking at the, we're looking at this Contoso Airlines app. Let's see uh, how we put that together. Microsoft Graph Data Connect starts in Azure Data Factory. If you haven't used Azure Data Factory before, it's a really wonderful scale-up tool that solves a huge number of problems. Uh, basically, it orchestrates data uh, access, transformation, and output. Uh, I've just got a really simple one here, um, but I'll just show you a little bit of how it works. A copy data activity, you can just drag this on the screen, or of course, there are program programmatic APIs has a source and a destination, right? So we have a, an Office 365 connection for Data Factory. We can specify that we just want the flight crew members, 
Uh, and so we, our application is only getting access to these specific users. And we can remove any fields that we don't need just by deleting them here. This is sent all the way down to the data officer who is making this consent experience uh, so that he can see exactly which fields are being created. The other part of this, right, so I'm copying in the data, then I'm going to load it into a, a Databricks notebook. Databricks notebooks, just like the notebooks that Preeti showed you, are really incredible tools, but here they connect to scale up large data infrastructure. Uh, so you can have hundreds of compute cores processing your terabytes of data. So let's look at uh, what, we're do what we're really doing here. So in that Power BI, you saw that I had all of that data from Office as well as my flight information data, right, from my flight database. We had that joined together through the power of common data model. Common data model, if you recall from Sacha's keynote, is a unified schema uh, and schema representation that allows any different tool to understand that well-defined schema and that schema metadata to connect all of that data together. So we're going to take the Microsoft Graph JSON objects we're going to use Databricks to transform them into normalized CSV objects that are much easier to work with in Power BI or lots of other tools. So here in Databricks, and I won't go into uh, all of the steps here, um, I will have a link uh, to a blog post uh, actually from TyGraph uh, that'll give you step-by-step -step instructions on how to use Databricks. I just wanted to point out uh, a couple of different points here. You can use Spark SQL to uh, process these, the JSON objects into a data frame. And a data frame is just a logical table that Databricks understands and knows how to parallelize processing over. We're using a SQL select statement to get the, the sub-properties of that JSON and writing them out to a CSV. And then the actual execution, that write command, uses the CDM library, which you can find on GitHub, and attached to your cluster, which makes it so easy to write into common data model. All you need is a data frame, and then there's a couple of properties, just what do you want to call your entity? So here I'm looking at the user's entity. We look at this at a different layer. This is Azure Storage Explorer. So I'm connected here to my Azure Storage. Right? We've got the JSON lines that are output from Microsoft Graph Data Connect, uh, which look like this. Right, these are JSON objects for the few of you that are Microsoft Graph developers. You'll recognize these properties, but they're all the, the sorts of things. These are events. These are the sorts of things you'd see in your Outlook email. Um, right, the email address, the sender, this sort of information. And when it's transformed through Databricks, we're putting the output here in the Power BI folder. So we have the model file, which describes the metadata, uh, and we have the CSV. Uh, which is, as you expect, it's a CSV of those objects that I defined in that Databricks. A cool feature that's, that's uh, in preview now in Power BI is allowing Power BI to connect ex directly to your data lake storage and common data model objects that are there. With some initial setup, which you can read about in that blog post, you can use Power BI to connect to all of your data in the common schema all in an Azure data lake. So you can have tens, hundreds of different data types of terabytes and petabytes of data and be able to process them all together, helping you uh, solve a lot of that grunt work of just joining and wrangling and processing that data so that you can use it in Power BI. Now, uh, so that's one demo. Um, did anybody hear about the knowledge mining announcements from this last weekend, Azure knowledge mining? One. All right, so I also heard about it last weekend. Uh, they emailed me, they, they said, hey, uh, we heard about Microsoft Graph Data Connect. Is there any kind of demo that uh, you know, we can do together? I'm like, build conference is Monday. Um, not really, uh, but I uh, sat down, uh, I think it was Friday night or Saturday, uh, and I started playing around to see if I could actually uh, get this to work with brand new preview technology uh, for Knowledge Store from Knowledge Mining. So I created an Azure search service. Uh, I created an index. And the, the cool thing here is that it uses cognitive services to extract key information like locations or people or key phrases uh, or other kinds of processing as you index this data. And it supports JSON lines, uh, the data that we are outputting by Microsoft Graph Data Connect. So I ran this index, 
And then the new feature, Knowledge Store, allows you to take this information and put it into a table. So here is the table, and we've got some IDs of the document. Here, I've taken the unstructured email body content uh, that we have uh, in this demo environment. Uh, we have made it structured. We've got the locations, we've got the people, we've got the key phrases. I could have done several other things. And, and since it's an, an Azure table, I remembered, well, as long as I'm doing Power BI, uh, Power BI supports Azure table as a connector. Uh, and so I thought I'd just put together a quick demo uh, for taking a look at uh, Azure tech, uh, emails that are mentioning Azure and emails that are mentioning Graph uh, and see which locations are also mentioned in these emails. Uh, and so uh, using, here are some that are using Power BI. Um, let's see, in Phoenix. So somebody rep uh, talked about Phoenix and they talked about Azure DevOps service essentials. All right, so this is a pretty simple scenario here, but if you think about an information worker, uh, all of their input and output, right, it's in that unstructured email body, that document body, and being able to make it structured allows you to help them with anything that they're working on, uh, from security uh, to business operations to processing to sales to field. That's the real power, right? I told you about TIGRAPH, I told you about Harmony. Limeade is improving employee engagement by finding effective manager patterns, right? So making, their employee, making the employees of people that buy this Limeade product better. Uh, we have TalentSoft that you saw in the keynote uh, who are helping Kristen Dior understand the talents uh, of their employees and helping them schedule new projects based on those skills for finding the employees who are working on those sorts of projects. But you can also scan and archive only the important data. You can find and destroy potential data loss avenues. You can recommend more friendly language use. You can help users discover all their data. You can find your company's best experts on any topic. You can learn best practices for your business processes. You can monitor rollout of new technology. Right, uh, anything your business, if you want to take a picture, fine. Uh, this isn't a comprehensive list of scenarios. Uh, you shouldn't stop <laughs> at these things. Uh, these are sorts of things that uh, different developers have talked to me about uh, that we want to enable to help any kind of a business process. Uh, so I showed you Azure Data Factory. I showed you the different data sets. Uh, we're, for GA, we have messages and events and calendar view and users and direct reports. Basically, the, the sorts of data that you'd see in Outlook, uh, where a lot of knowledge workers, information workers, spend their time. Privacy, I wanted to highlight. Your data is your data. If you're using Microsoft Graph Data Connect, you have a very clear consent experience. You can delete it. Uh, you can have audit logs enabled on that application so that you have the audits to who is accessing this. Uh, you have data minimizations so that only, this, not even just the, the users, but it's specific users, specific data types or categories, specific columns of those categories of data. And then I haven't been able to show you without enough time, but the data officer can further filter that information to remove their C-suite or their legal team uh, or their pilots or whoever Contoso Airlines needs to be able to remove uh, through scope filtering. Then an application hosting, like I mentioned uh, before, right? the net result of all of these features that you're able to build into your application is you're getting only the very minimum amount of data from the right users of the right data types or categories of the right columns. You're providing the pri privacy policy and terms of service upfront to the data officer who has a notification-based experience. It allows for that data officer to filter out the more sensitive content it keeps the data within your organization and your Azure subscription. You can have encryption and audit logs turned on for your application, which stops the data flow if, if uh, that is ever turned off. The developer does, or your managed service provider does not have standing access uh, and must request just-in-time access cross-tenant uh, as a uh, new feature uh, to get time-limited access when you raise a support ticket to them. And at any time, your Azure your Azure subscription owner can just delete this application, deleting all of the data. These are the sorts of things that you get from Microsoft 365, right? These and more, right, that we are trying to enable you to be able to develop in Azure 
so that you can make the same uh, style of promises to your customers uh, along those lines. So analytics apps, right? They are big data. They are terabytes, they are petabytes of data uh, across dozens of systems, right? You saw just how many systems there are in the security space. Uh, and you guys, if you've worked in data engineering at all, you know that every other space similarly has dozens of systems that you need to connect to. So we recommend taking that data, using Azure Data Factory or other tools to pull it into a common location. Uh, an Azure Data Lake store uh, is, a, is a wonderful choice for that. And then use transformation tools. Uh, Databricks isn't the only option that Azure has. There's HD Insight, uh, there's SQL Data Warehouse, uh, there's vendors with tools. You can use pre your, prefer your preferred tool sets to connect all of these things together. Transform with the end result of having your petabytes of data in storage with tools that can handle that much data, all of it understood through the common data model. Yet another um, challenge that we have with analytics apps is how to get the right uh, set of data, uh, like access for the applications and the user who is actually logged in to access that uh, data as well. So with Graph, you can actually have application-only mode where the application gets the right set of permissions consented by your tenant admin so that the application has the right uh, set of access uh, to scopes to access that uh, sensitive data. Similarly, you can have user delegated mode where you set your users up with security reader role as well as ensure that your application has that permissions too. So that way it's all going through the tenant admin and you ensure that the right set of people and the right set of apps have access to that sensitive data. So that's yet another thing that you might want to factor in for analytics solutions. Now let's, uh, with this, with all of this, let's get started. And uh, the, basically like there is a GitHub site that we have for the Graph Security API, so, and we have a contribution program too. So go ahead, contribute your samples. These can be dashboards, these can be notebooks, these can be, there are Logic App playbooks or Microsoft Flow uh, playbooks or workflows that you can contribute, or code samples in C Sharp, Python, or Node.js. There was a contribution that we received for Next.js from someone, so it, from Oli, uh, from Zeet. And we recognize all these contributions as well, and uh, there is a program on that. So we hope to see all of you there on GitHub. If you want to extend and start using Microsoft Graph Data Connect, contact us, contact me, at Abrac Jamson, uh, at Twitter, um, or contact us through the product page to uh, begin using workplace analytics. Uh, if you're an ISV and you want to sell to customers who do not have workplace analytics, still contact us. Uh, we'll be able to work something out for you. Um, and this blog post, uh, well, use, learning how to use the Microsoft 365 data through G Microsoft Graph Data Connect into common data model. Uh, there was a, uh, a blog post that I mentioned, uh, graph, aka.ms slash graph in CDM. Uh, or you can search Tie Graph Office CDM. I'm sure you'll get there. There's also uh, a couple of podcasts that Tyler and myself did uh, on that same topic. And other sessions here at this conference. Yep. Uh, we, there is a session this morning uh, learning about external data flows and common data model. That's how you get that at scale data into Power BI. Uh, there is a session on App Source and Azure Marketplace that's going to talk more about the value proposition for you as a developer uh, about publishing into App Source and Azure Marketplace. Uh, there is a session just now at 5 o'clock um, on, on building connected security experiences. So, as a developer, irrespective of which, where which way your segment is, enterprise, ISV, MSP, you can all benefit from that. Um, it ties in Graph Security API and other API sets as well to build enrich solutions and other services too. So um, just a quick update. We have the demo working. I can quickly <laughs> show it in 30 seconds. Uh, well, so while she's loading that up, uh, here we go. So yeah, uh, this is our getting started. These were our libraries. Get it loaded, there's an act back. So this is interactive code, um, code updates that you can do and also running execution. So now it's connected to the Graph Security API using the creds that I gave and the environment variable. So now we're just gonna test top five alerts, which is reason most alerts from all the security providers. So that's the query out here and ODATA query and the other query and we have all the details. And investigation scenarios was basically, this is Paul's. Uh, alerts that we want to take a look. 
So these are pulse alerts that we have. And a very quick digging into the user state of his alerts, where did he travel? So yeah, he was in these three locations. So yeah, it's very quick to update. And uh, in line, I can make a quick update to just pull in Douglas's alerts. And I can just execute, shift, enter, and that's it. Voila, he gets Douglas's alerts. We thought we wouldn't get that demo working. <laughs> uh, of course we did. Yeah, of course we did. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, so if you're not already in the developer program, do you want to bring the slide back yeah, up? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, if you're not already in the developer program, it's awesome. You just get a free perpetual office mm -hmm. license for 25 users for yes. development purposes. Go do that. aka.ms slash 0365 dev program. Get in that. We've got community calls. We've got access to experts. You can contact us through it. Mm -hmm. um, it's terrific. We also have user voice. Microsoft Graph is now on user voice for you to be sending your feedback there. Other sessions about Microsoft Graph, these already happened. Uh, so for yeah. you live in the room, you've got to go uh, watch these streams. These are the session codes if you missed them. Uh, there are really a lot of terrific uh, breakout sessions on lots of different topics about Microsoft Graph that you're going to get a whole lot of value out of. OK, we're out of time. Uh, surveys, we love your surveys. We love your feedback. Uh, Preeti and I do conferences like this. We like to know what you guys want to hear, what we should have done better. Uh, these kinds of things really provides a lot for us. So uh, Preeti and I are going to be up here for questions if you have anything. And thanks for spending your hour with us.